Excellent. Good morning, every well, it's morning for me. Good day, everybody. Uh, oh, it's afternoon here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Thanks for the correction. Um, so, uh, good morning. Uh, it's I'm I'm really happy to be here. Um, to to partner with LASU CBT and Kazim to to be able to to talk to you about. Um, some great technology today. Um, my name is Peter Shand. I am a cloud solution architect uh, from Microsoft, and uh, my focus is on data and AI, and I also focus on the retail and consumer goods um, vertical within the organization. So let me go ahead and um, uh, share my screen. There are a couple of things that uh, you know, I wanted to, to touch on before I actually going to, I'll, I'll be showing you a, a couple of slides today, initially, um, active slides actually, as well as um, I'll be going into a, a demo of the, um, of, of the Power BI and AI environment. Okay, but I wanted to cover a few little topics before we got into that. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Are you seeing my screen? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Excellent. All right. So, uh, uh, you know, we, we, with with this specific topic, um, Power BI and artificial intelligence, I wanted to, to, to sort of set the stage a little bit. I don't know how much of the um, audience is familiar with these technologies and this. To, to level set and just um, talk about some 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 basics or some foundational elements first. So um, machine learning is uh, a data science technique that allows us to uh, use existing data sets that we've collected uh, within you know an organization or within um, you know a scientific experiment or whatever it might be. And I'll use that data to forecast behaviors and outcomes and trends, right? Uh, a lot of it is statistical technologies and, and mathemat mathematical algorithms, right? Separate and apart from that, and similar or related is, is AI. And AI is leveraging these machine learning capabilities to mimic human behavior or, you know, for the most part, typically decision making, right? So when we refer to AI um, in, in, in this context, it is both artificial intelligence and machine learning. And depending on what you're doing, there might be different use cases, right? So Power BI, uh, again, you might be familiar or you might not be familiar with Power BI. It is uh, a tool that uh, Microsoft has developed to allow you to connect to and visualize data um, primarily for self-service and, and business intelligence use cases, right? However, Microsoft, um, you know, in its in its strategy to to get more data into more people's hands, it um, have has gradually and over time added more artificial intelligence features and um, machine learning capabilities into um, Power BI. Okay. One of the things that I talked about with Kazim before um, in 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 our uh, Wednesday radio program was artificial intelligence and uh, DevOps, right? I'm, I'm not going to dig into that. However, I'm, I'm going to refer to, to one of my colleagues, um, Mohammed. He has, a, a, I'll put this in the chat and I'll probably share, I'll share it with um, Kazim as well. He has a whole, um, you know, list of MLOps and DevOps related um, videos that you can review and uh, at your own time on your own time and, and get more familiar with the concept, okay? The other thing that we talked about was um, programming languages, which, um, you know, for machine learning and AI. And typically what we see is, um, you know, for the, for the most complex um, use cases, it's R or Python, you know, a, a large portion of, of what I would work with typically would be Python, right? Uh, and it would involve, you know, 
building and deploying code and so on and so forth. However, um, you know, the industry has moved a lot of this uh, requirement for coding away or, um, you know, abstracted a lot of it. So it allows, you know, drag and drop and, you know, designer like um, features to be able to, to be leveraged for, for users that um, have critical use cases, but may not necessarily be developers. Okay. So um, let me share these slides and we'll talk through them. Uh, one sec. I'll go back and forth. Uh, again, thanks to LSAU, CBT 18 Limited, and um, we're going to talk about AI and Power BI. Uh, you'll see there are a couple of pictures. I, I have three children you know, between the ages of 11 and 21. And I've lived in three countries. I lived in the US, uh, uh, which is where I am now, and I lived in the Cayman Islands, and I am uh, Jamaican by birth. So I, I grew up and went to university in Jamaica. Okay. All right. Let's talk about AI in Power BI. So um, I, I just wanted to take a little time to, to sort of describe what we're seeing here. And, and, and it's, it's kind of a, a spectrum, you know, a spectrum of capabilities, use cases, and so on. And what the capabilities within Power BI allow a different set of personas to do. So let's start from right and move over to the to the left side. Um, so business users, uh, typically they aren't, you know, uh, developers, not, not, not necessarily, um, you know, competent in coding. However, uh, they, they, they need, um, you know, technology to be able to help them to be to make decisions, right? And, you know, over the years, we've done a lot of that with um, visualization tools like Power BI reporting capabilities and dashboards, but deep insights still required humans to start of, to, to dig in and, and, and try to get more information to be able to make um, sensible decisions. And then you move a little bit left um, to analysts where, you know, these are deep um, Sort of have deep capabilities as it relates to business intelligence in terms of data and so on and manipulation of data um you know uh typically you know sql uh type um capabilities and so on you know multiple types of, of databases it could be um flat file stuff like hadoop and stuff like that as well as um you know um typical um transactional database types like oracle or sql server and stuff like that right um and they have their own use cases as well and then you finally have data science with scientists which are towards the the, the um the more extreme end of the spectrum and they typically have a lot more programming or, or development capabilities and usually are trying to solve significantly more difficult problems right um you know exploring and so on and so forth so you'll see that within Power BI, we're able to, to meet um, the needs of quite uh, a broad spectrum of personas within an organization or within an entity, okay? Let me um, switch back a little bit. I'm gonna go back. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was what you can do and what you can't do, right? And you'll see here on this, um, this website, uh, I'll put this in the chat as well. What you can do with with the free um, features that are, are that come with Power BI. Uh, to be honest, you can't do a whole lot. However, there are um, some capabilities specifically, and we're going to talk about that insights and Q and A and so on that you can do with the free version. If you don't have, a, if you have, you know, the full version, then then you'll get more capabilities. The most, and, and that is for primarily for the business users, right, and and some analysts. The most complex um, capabilities, though, um, will require um, premium licensing. So you'll see here, you can do AI visuals um, in the Power BI Pro um, licensing scheme, but if you wanted to do advanced AI and text analytics, analytics and so on. You have to go to the premium and so on and so forth, right? So, 
uh, I just wanted to, to set that stage um, and, and we'll go back to the slides now and, and sort of dig in. So, so what we're going to do is, is, is kind of just explore some use cases together. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure about the, the actual um, you know, meeting. If you want to ask questions, uh, I suppose, Kazim, you can, you can um, quarter that, quarter about that for us. Okay. So, uh, let's start with AI for business users. So let's take a look at this um, scenario here. Uh, uh, this is one use case where we're, we're doing what is called anomaly detection. So this is a, a, a nice dashboard, um, but what, what we're trying to, to look at, if you look at the, the revenue um, sort of visualization towards the, the right of the screen, there's a, a spike in the middle and you know, human nature, you're, you're going to want to try and figure out what that is and whether it's relevant to your business or not. In the past, what you would have to do is kind of dig into that data and try to analyze it yourself. Maybe, you know, use some Excel or something like that to analyze it yourself. But built into the platform now is a, a feature called anomaly, anomaly detection. So we'll, we'll run through it and you'll see what happens, all right? This is primarily just, you know, changing colors and so on um, to differentiate. And then you see it at the click. And what has happened is that if you look to the, the, the far right of the screen, though, you'll notice that, and you'll see me looking to the other side of the screen as well. And I'm sorry about that, but uh, I have multiple screens going on. What you'll notice is that um, there's an explanation um, for that particular spike, right? You didn't have to dig in. You didn't have to ask your, your analyst or, you know, one of your um, report creators or anything like that to, to, to dig in for you. Once the back end data is there, then, you know, the AI capabilities built into Power BI will, will sort of make these, um, you know, um, explanations for you. So it, it's explaining here, revenue was expectedly high on Saturday, August 31st. Um, and it gives you the value and it, and, and it gives you the expected range. And it's also giving you possible explanations. So you'll see um, towards the left there that there's an age group um, correlation, 50 to 65, that it's, it's, it's um, asserting. So um, you'll notice that once you click on it now, you'll see that it it explains what's happening here. So you'll see the, 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 the lighter blue, which is re regular revenue. And then it also gives you a darker blue, which is explaining revenue for 50 to 65. And you'll notice that the spike is there and associated with that particular age group, right? So it, it, it might be a, a combination of things, um, but at least you have some insight as to be able to to, to, to dig into the data a little bit further, okay? So we'll, we'll, we'll run through it again so that you can see it. Um, I'll try to go through so that you'll see, find anomalies, and then you you kind of give it a color so that it, it um, you can highlight it. And then once that's done, you can click on it, and it will give you the explanation. So, you know, it, this is, um, as it points out in the, in the slide, it's for time series um, primarily. A lot of, a lot, and, and I suppose they'll be adding additional functionality in the future, but, um, you know, a lot of these AI capabilities are associated with time series as well. So let's, let's take a look at another um, example. All right, so here, let's take a look at this quickly. This is another dashboard. Um, you'll notice that the, the dashboard is, is another very attractive dashboard, but that visualization in the middle of the transaction by region and city, um, it's, 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 you know, it's attractive, but I, I, just a quick look at it, it. It's not telling me a great deal, right? Um, um, or at least telling me anything that can help me to make a decision, but you wanted to summarize what was happening, you can click on it, select that, and it gives you an explanation of what's going on, right? So it, it explains that a particular 
location, Crystal Castle, had the highest revenue. And then um, Esther Wynn had the highest number of transactions. And then it, it, it compares and contrasts the West versus the East. And then it also gives you the averages of, of, of per so store in terms of um, revenue per transaction, as well as the number of transactions um, for, for, for a particular location. So just by clicking on it um, and selecting summarize, you, you have a summary of that data. It's just the way that humans consume data um, information. Yeah, we're very visual. However, you know, for, for, for certain things, it is, it is actually a lot more useful to have a synopsis or uh, you know an explanation in, in text that that, that, that that helps the process, right? So uh, let's 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 follow through a little bit more. So here, um, I was using the smart narrative um, capabilities here, and uh, it, you're seeing it's giving more information about the um, the visualizations and about the, the underlying data sets, right? Um, sort of grouping information so that you can consume it based on, you know, groups that might be relevant to your business, right? You know, a time period or whatever it might be, average number of visits, you know, all of these things are there in the underlying data, um, not necessarily visible um, from the, the perspective of the, the, the dashboard, but might be useful information for, you know, a business user to, to be able to, to make a decision make a decision or at least, you know, sort of have an idea of what's going on. And you can, you can focus in, as, as you'll see as well, on, um, on specific, um, you know, data sets. So you'll see, um, making it a little bit brighter and then selecting a particular uh, data set uh, category, you know, electronics versus outdoor and so on and so forth. And then, the, the smart narrative changes based on that. So we'll run through it again so that you can see. Oh, sorry, a little bit short on time, but I'm gonna pick up the pace. All right, so let's go to the next slide. Uh, so this is a, a very useful feature as well, Q&A, where you can ask natural language questions of the underlying data. Um, you, you, you essentially just you know, place that visualization on the screen and it analyzes the data and it it gives you, it selects a, um, a probable or likely set of questions that you might ask, right? So you use it, top genres by game, genres by game. And uh, this is a game data set, obviously, uh, you know, um, electronic gaming, right? Um, and, uh, you know, what what types of games are, are selling the most? Uh, on, on top of that, it, it, it also, um, you know, um, make suggestions or, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, your search engine thing or whatever, based on what you put in, it would, you know, select the most likely um, thing close by. However, what's really useful is that you can actually train this in some ways. All right, you're going to see awesome. It didn't recognize awesome because it had that, um, you know, red underline or two, two lines under it. Well, you can define what awesome means to you or means to your business. So it's saying what, what he's doing there. Publishers that are awesome have a sentiment of greater than five point five, right? So that means that it it adjusts the 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 um the 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 results based on your uh, language or what language is, is is familiar or useful to you, right? In the in this case means um, you know small publishers, small producers, and he's going to train it. So number of games created less than two. So, and then, you know, it's, it's applying the definition and then you notice that the, the, the result changes based on, um, you know, teaching the, the, um, the, the Q&A um, functionality to understand how you speak and what's relevant to you, all right? So let's move on to the next one. Uh, this is also really, really interesting decomposition tree. It, it, it kind of leverages this tree structure to, to allow you to break down data as well as to you know, kind of get to root cause based on the data set. So it, it keeps building this tree based on the selections that you put in. And then you can um, you know, click and highlight and so on, and it will allow you to, to see 
data broken out into you know it's it's most interesting or it's most useful um sort of um tree structure right so it's this is this is quite interesting and useful to kind of figure out an underlying root cause for a particular metric or kpi um so that you can get you know um continue to to, to make decisions based on that true again uh, so this one quick so this is uh, another one called key influencers. Um, this allows you to essentially uh, determine what's driving your KPIs. What are the underlying um, sort of correlated um, metrics or or data sets that are 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 determining what is happening with your data or within within your business? So you'll see here. Um, this is guest analytics. I think this is this is a data set, the Hawaii data set, um, travel data set, and why people visit. You know why people return. You know you'll see it. Primary interest is relaxation. Uh, countries UK. So you know most of the people that return are from the UK and so on. Um, but their primary interest is relaxation. You can't really you can market in the UK, I guess. Um, but you you can also adjust. You know the 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 um the setting or the 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 property to 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 be um more relaxation friendly because that is why people keep returning right so those are those are some of the business sort of decisions that you can make based on on the information that you glean from this um this is quick insights similar sort of a thing um where it, it you you select a particular um portion of the uh, uh, the visualization and it gives you information on why something occurred. So it says analyze, explain the decrease. And what is happening here is that it's explaining that the decrease in visits by date is, is re related to um, a reason for travel or reason for visiting. So you have less people that are traveling at that particular time or visiting at that particular time where their reason is pleasure and vacation right even though uh honeymoon and meetings and, con and conventions and so on have increased but then drop off in pleasure and vacation is so much that it has caused a decrease in the overall um you know visit um uh metric right and, and this is useful information that you can you can quickly glean from from just selecting it on the visualization. So we'll switch over to um, analysts now, and this is a little bit more, as I said, you know, more data capabilities. And this is this particular um, functionality is built into the, the the Power BI portal. You really have to have the um, the licensing um, in place to be able to deliver this. So what's happening here again? This is associated with visits. Uh, what um, this analyst is doing is trying to determine sentiment for a particular um, based on reviews that are, have been submitted to the website or whatever it might be um, for a particular set of properties or properties or for um, you know uh, tourist website or something like that. So. It gives you the sentiments over on the, 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 the right the right side. Right, you're seeing it here. And then uh, he needs or she needs to, to 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 get some more information. So she's trying to um, at this point in time also uh, extract key phrases from those reviews. So what is gonna happen next is you also have the sentiments. And then the key phrases or words associated with those with those reviews. So you can use that to, to make decisions. You know, if, if particular phrases keep coming up, then it's something that you need to address. Similarly, here um, we're doing the same thing um, in data sets, right? Um, but we're leveraging a word cloud visualization. You know, based on the, the the data set information that we've collected with the um, the uh, sentiment analysis, so that we can determine which words or which phrases come up most. Right? This is this is real information, right? Location, room, condo, 
staff, all of these things are critical. And then, you know, you can use that information also to, to, um, to, to sort of categorize properties. That's what they're doing here. Higher sentiments for a particular property, Oahu in versus Waikiki getaway and so on. And then um, sentiment based on images. So what images or what um, components of the properties are, are, are generating the best sentiment. So beach, um, bathroom, water view, all of these things are, are driving, um, you know, are impactful to, to visits, right? And how, how the guests are, are um, feeling about their visit, right? Positive or negative. Uh, this is also, this is full blown machine learning, but it's using customized models that are, uh, uh, are pre canned models that have, uh, that are uh, available within the um, Power BI service within the portal, right? Again, so this is stuff that you're going to need this, um, the premium license for. And uh, you can, it actually goes and it trains a model and in this particular data set. What they're trying to do is to figure out the likelihood of a win um, based on you know certain sort of inputs. So you know what what influences what are the main influencers for for winning and so on, and then using that data now to determine um, you know the likelihood of a of a win and and you can use that to do some sort of budgeting and so on. So it's leveraging the machine learning capabilities, training a model based on the data set, and then determining based on previous data sets what were the inputs or the features uh, in machine learning speed that 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 really um, is, um, you know influence the the outcome? Right. So this is a binary um, prediction. So it's yes or no, or win or loss, whatever it may be. Right? Uh, this is uh, it's probably the most basic um, in terms of the the, the yeah. capabilities. Um, and it it is just allowing you to do a forecast based on, on on some sort of time series, right? So that's that's very basic. And then AI for data scientists. Um, here is where we're leveraging models that have been created um, by a data scientist. These are custom models. And you're you're seeing it on the here on the. Um, Screen that have been created and registered within Azure machine machine learning, and then um, you know um, these have been provided to a particular user to be able to leverage them. Right, what you're doing here is 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 tagging or image recognition, right? So what they're they're pointing it to a data set that has URLs for images associated with the reviews, and the um, the model essentially is predicting. What is in the image, right? And then finally, um, you know, if you're a you know deep uh, sort of data scientist and you have programming knowledge, you can actually embed um, R and Python code into your um, Power BI reports, and that will you know you you, you can leverage you know stuff like pandas as well as Seaborn and and a lot of the capabilities that have been that you know many machine learning um, and data scientist um, developers are using. Okay. Um, Hi, so, Peter. so that's that's um, the the slides. Uh, I think we've kind of run out of time. Uh, I don't know if there are any. Um, if you have a, a few seconds to go through a, an actual demo, or um, or we can we can table that for another time. Kazi? Yes, yes. Can you hear me, Peter? I can. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm afraid uh, the time will not permit us to go through the demo. So maybe we can do this another time on the text talk where I can share it with the people. Uh, no problem. Yeah. Uh, my apologies. Um, <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a lot of information and there's a lot of capabilities that have been built into the, the products. So I wanted mm -hmm. to, to show as much of it as possible. Oh, okay. Th thank you so much. Thank you very much again, Peter, for joining us. Thank you very much. All right.
right. So I'll, I'll share the the um, URLs and so on, and you can you can share with the with the, the attendees. And and thank you everybody, and and, and thanks for your patience. All right. Okay. Oh,